Roger Corman's back at it again with Humanoids from the Deep. I swear, I don't even plan on watching his movies, it's just that he made literally hundreds of them, and a lot of them are creature features. I don't really mind that much, usually they're at least entertaining, and they always have that Corman charm. What's Corman charm? Well, that's the nice way of saying that this movie has a lot of boobs in it. To start off, we're introduced to a few of the citizens of a small coastal town. The main ones to take away here are Jim, Johnny Eagle, and Hank Slattery, who's played by Vic Morrow, the actor who was tragically killed while filming the 80s Twilight Zone. You didn't get promoted? I gave it to that Jew bastard. Hank hates Johnny, mainly because he's Native American and really no other reason. He's just a jerk. We see all the fishermen head out to sea, because in a town on the ocean, what other profession is there? Everyone's a fisherman. One guy's out on his own with his son and a small crew, and it looks like they just got the catch of a lifetime. But the old broken down ship can't even pull it up out of the water. Eventually, gas spills over, the mast breaks, and the kid falls in, pulled under by something. Just then, they let a flare, which ignites the gas, and boom! The entire ship blows up. What a way to start your movie. The monster kills a kid, and a boat blows up. Well, everyone in town knows the condition of the boat, and they just assume it was a leak that caused the accident so no one really thinks anything more about it. As Jim is talking it over with the sheriff, his dog wants to go outside. And I really don't like where this is going. Don't do it, movie. Don't kill the dog. Oh, great. You just had to do it, didn't you? Well, the next day, we see that he wasn't the only one harmed, and it looks like just about all of the town dogs are now dead, except for Johnny's. Now we meet Peggy and her boyfriend Jerry, a super horny couple that take any chance they can to go make out. But they can't right now because they have to get to the annual salmon festival. When they get there, what do they do? Make out. Yeah, why even go then? Just stay home. Well, at the festival, we also meet the president of Canco, a big canning business that's planning on building a plant in town, bringing in much needed jobs. We also meet Dr. Susan Drake, who also works for Canco. Her job is to find a way to make the salmon bigger, better, and more plentiful. And they say she found a way. Just then, Johnny Eagle comes barging in, ticked off because now his dog is dead too, and he's blaming Slattery. Fed up with all his crap, he tells the entire town that he's going to get a lawyer and take back the land that is rightfully his, which would mean no more canning factory. I'm gonna stop your cannery, Slattery. Outside, a fight breaks out that really goes on for too long when the sheriff is just standing there. But eventually, he breaks it up and stops the fight. It'll be about enough. The next day, we see our favorite couple making out on the beach. Come on, guys, you're gonna rub your lips off. Well, they run around for a while, make out some more, run around. Ugh, kinda getting tired of the same old stuff here. Well, they're finally attacked. Thank goodness something's actually happening. One of the monsters turns Jerry into Two-Face. And not long after that, Peggy's attacked too. Back in town, Slattery's getting a group of guys together to take down Johnny. They know he's going the legal route, hiring lawyers and taking his case to court. Slattery's plan isn't so legal. It's to throw a Molotov cocktail and blow up Johnny's house. Gee whiz, that's a bit excessive, isn't it? Johnny and his friends fight off the flames. This girl goes to get help, and Tommy and Johnny stay back. 
but they have more to worry about than fighting fires, because a sea monster is about to attack. Tommy's tossed all around until Johnny can finally help him out in saving Tommy. The same can't be said for his girlfriend Linda, however, because she's attacked while driving. Man, this movie has a lot of explosions. First the boat, then Johnny's house, and now this car? Well, he brings the body into town and tells them all it was sea monsters, which Slattery plays into so he doesn't get into trouble for blowing up his house. If Johnny thinks that it was monsters that did it, then that's all that much better for him. But still, who's going to believe that? Wanting to get to the bottom of all this, a small team is gathered up to hunt down whatever did this to Tommy. Dr. Drake has her theories, and it seems like she knows more than what she's saying. But for now, they trust her. She notices a lot of caves on the coastline, and they go for a closer look. This is when I start to wonder, what season is it? I mean, all the guys are wearing jackets or vests, and it looks pretty cold. But here, the doctor's in a swimsuit. And what about Peggy earlier? She was hardly wearing anything. It looks like it's 35 degrees out here, but the poor women have to wear practically nothing. Anyway, it's not long before they find a nest. And where there's baby monsters, mom can't be too far behind. They all fight for a bit, but in the end, the humans win and the humanoids are killed. They end up finding a leg buried in the sand, and we see who it's attached to, Peggy. And guess what? She's still alive. Now that they have the body of a monster, Dr. Drake can take it back to her lab and do some research on it. This is where we find out that, yeah, Dr. Drake does know more than she's letting on. She explains that they were experimenting with something called DNA5 to help stimulate growth. By experimenting with tadpoles, they were able to make a frog grow full size in a matter of days. Talk about growing pains. Anyway, they applied this same technique to some salmon, and, well, a bunch escaped into the ocean. The local fish population started chowing down on them, and boom, mutant sea monster. Specifically, the coelacanth, a prehistoric type of fish that hasn't evolved in millions of years. Look at him. What a dopey looking fish. So anyway, to summarize, the doctors inject DNA5 into the salmon, the salmon escape, the coelacanth eat the salmon and start to evolve overnight. Got it? Good. Moving on. The timing for such an abomination couldn't have been worse either. Because now we go to the town's festival, where everyone will be gathered. Jim and the gang try to warn everyone, but... It's too late, and the humanoids from the deep attack. It's mass chaos, and honestly, quite fun to watch. No one is safe, especially women who have to fight topless. Classy. While all this mayhem is going on, Jim and the Doc start spreading gasoline in the water, which I guess makes sense because these things come from the water, but Really, you're just going to burn up all the other fish while the monsters go on dry land. Whatever, it seems to work, kind of. Johnny and Slattery resolve their differences when Johnny basically saves his life. More people are attacked, some of which are on the merry-go-round, which doesn't make sense because every one of those I've ever seen has a handle that has to be constantly pulled back in order to operate. So you're telling me that some dude is just pulling on that handle while all this carnage is going on? And what about the Ferris wheel? <laughs> yep, it's still going. Anyway, once everything is somewhat under control, Jim rushes home to his wife, who's having her own problems. A bunch of the monsters have broken in and are starting to attack. Luckily, she can handle herself but when your only weapon is a lamp, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have a bad time. Well, eventually she gets a knife and is unstoppable. Man, she's brutal. Just then, something is at the front door. 
She goes for the attack, and it's Jim who stops her. The next day, we see the carnage at the carnival, which would have been a better name for the movie in my opinion. Actually, the original title was Beneath the Darkness, but I guess Corman didn't think that that was cheesy enough. Anyway, in the final scene, we see Peggy giving birth. I have no idea where this is going. Oh, what a surprise. She gave birth to a mutant sea monster. Ah, so scary. More like so dumb. And that was Monster, Humanoids from the Deep. And you can't say it was boring. There's never a dull moment in this movie. Just when you're starting to drift off to sleep, boom, a monster attack. Starting to get a little bored, maybe check your phone, and some girl takes her shirt off and you have my attention again. Actually, the director, Barbara Peters, hated the idea of having so many topless women in her movie, and she refused to shoot the scenes. But in the end, Corman did it anyway, and when she saw the final product, Peters wanted her name completely removed from the picture which Corman agreed to do, if she would pay to have it retitled, which she refused. So her name is still in the credits. What a debacle. I remember watching Humanoids from the Deep on TV, so that would have been heavily edited, and probably a little bit more of what Peters originally created, so I guess it all goes full circle. As for the look of the creatures, I actually quite liked it. They look like Humanoids from the Deep. They have big exposed brains and really long arms, which look goofy, but still kind of cool. Speaking of goofy, the stuntmen actually refused to wear the suits because they too thought that it was too quote unquote goofy looking. So they had to hire additional actors just for the monsters. As for the plot, it's as basic as it gets and as dumb as it gets. Why did they think that lighting the ocean on fire was a good idea to stop the creatures? Why does a Molotov cocktail blow up an entire house? Well, I'll tell you why. Fire and explosions are entertaining. And that's just what Humanoids from the Deep is. Mindless entertainment. If you haven't seen it, I say give it a watch, but turn your brain off and have fun. I give it three flashy explosions out of... Hey honey, why don't you take it off? Let's see some skin. Nothing comes off till I see it. Okay, how's this? Oh, come on, show me more than the head. Well, the head's the best part.